In question two of our series, where we learn how to measure the change in enthalpy in a coffee cup calorimeter, we ended off with this question, and it reads, the addition of hydrochloric acid to a silver nitrate solution precipitates silver chloride according to the reaction shown below. When 50 decimal zero milliliters of 0 0.100 molar of AgNO3 is combined with 50 decimal zero milliliters of 0 0.100 molar HCl in a coffee cup calorimeter, the temperature changes from 23.4 to 24.21. We're asked to calculate the change in enthalpy of the reaction for the solution as written. Also, we need to use 1.00 grams per milliliter as the density and the specific heat capacity shown here. To do this question successfully, the first thing that we have to do is find the heat capacity of the solution. In other words, we'll use this formula to find out how much heat the solution absorbs. Now the solution is composed of 50 milliliters of AgNO3 and 50 milliliters of HCl. So first we need to add up 50 decimal zero plus 50 decimal zero, and that will give us a total volume of 100 decimal zero milliliters. The formula here wants the mass of the solution times the specific heat capacity times delta T. We can find delta T quite easily by taking the end temperature and subtracting it from the initial. So we ended off with 24.21 degrees Celsius minus 23.4 degrees Celsius. If we subtract these numbers using our calculator, 24.21 minus 23.40 gives us 0 0.81 as our difference. 0 0.81 degrees Celsius. We found our delta T. We can also find our mass by taking 100 decimal zero milliliters and using the density to find the grams. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. One gram is equal to one milliliter, so this is the same thing as saying a mass of 100 decimal zero grams. Let's go ahead and find the amount of heat that's absorbed by the solution. And also keep in mind that the solution is absorbing heat, so we're expecting a positive Q value. So the heat of the solution is equal to the mass of 100 decimal zero grams times 4 decimal 18, which was given in the question, times 0 0.81. Using our calculator once again, 100 decimal zero times 4.18 times 0 0.81. We should end up with a number that has only two significant figures. Although, I will write as many digits as I can just to prevent any rounding errors. So I'll write down 338 decimal 58. 338 decimal 58 joules. And also this is positive as expected. Now what's interesting is that the amount of heat absorbed by the solution is the amount of heat given off by the reaction. And the relationship is shown right here, where this number should be negative. So the QRXN, heat of the reaction, is negative 338.58 joules. The last thing that we have to do is take this number and divide it by the number of moles of AgNO3. To find the number of moles of AgNO3, what I have to do is take its molarity, which is 0 0.100 m, or in other words, 0 0.100 moles per liter, and multiply it by the volume. The volume right now is in milliliters, so we need to convert this into liters. So I'll take this number, 50 decimal zero milliliters, and multiply it to 1,000 milliliters at the bottom and one liter at the top. What will happen is this milliliter unit and this unit will cancel out, liters will cancel out, leaving us with the amount of moles of AgNO3. Let's go ahead and figure what that is. We have 0 0.100 times 50 decimal zero, all being divided by 1,000. We get 5 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So remember this number. I'll take negative 338 decimal 58 and divide it by what I see. Negative 338.58 divided by the number, which gives us negative 67,716. So delta H RxN is equal to negative 677.16 joules. 
We need this to two significant figures, because remember, this number was two significant figures. I'll stop writing after the 7, and the number following this 7 is another 7. So we end up with negative 68,000 joules, or simply negative 6.8 times 10 to the power of 4 kilojoules. Now one thing to keep in mind before we conclude is that our delta H of the reaction was per mole. And if you look at the chemical formula, we only had one mole of AgNO3. So whatever your answer is, it should have been per one mole. Technically, you were supposed to multiply this by one mole of AgNO3, and the mole unit would cancel out, leaving you with only joules. And there you have it. That is how to measure delta H in a coffee cup calorimeter.